it looks like Trump is denied his immunity claim, which I was hoping that would happen. Um, now, Trump can't claim that because he was president, he's immune to trying to interfere with the election, which is good because uh, if uh, they gave him immunity like uh, he was wanting, that would mean he could attempt to try to interfere with the election the next time. Here's Craig Melvin. And a good morning to you. We're coming on the air with breaking news about former President Donald Trump. Just moments ago, a federal appeals court in Washington, D.C., rejected Mr. Trump's legal claim that the former president is immune from criminal charges for his efforts to overturn the 2020 election results. This all ahead of his criminal trials that are slated to start a little bit later this year, as early as March, perhaps. Let's go straight to our senior legal correspondent, Laura Jarrett. So let's just... Now that he is not considered immune, um, the mounting evidence against him will be easily used to convict him and show that he instigated the insurrection and as well as uh, try to interfere with the election in Georgia and various other places and all his other crimes that he's committed involving the presidency. To start with what this ruling means and what it does not mean, and I would assume that the president will likely appeal immediately to the Supreme Court. He may go to the Supreme Court, Craig, but just to walk people through what has happened here, the former president tried to file this motion to try to get the case completely wiped away from the books, right? Because if he's immune from prosecution, then he cannot be trial at, at all. And again, this isn't the case in Washington, D.C., where he's been accused of trying to overturn the last election. Now, he lost in the lower court on that issue. He appealed up to this three-judge panel, two Biden appointed one Bush appointee has rejected that completely. Now that he's lost at this level, he can try to go to the full panel of D.C. Circuit judges there. There are about 11 or 13 active judges. Or, if he wants, he can go to the Supreme Court. Now, my, why might he want to go to the full D.C. Circuit? Because the whole point of this is to delay, delay, delay. And so if he does that, it slows this train down, Craig. NBC's Gary. I mean, yeah, he may attempt to... Uh go to the Washington, D.C. circuit, but, I mean, it, he'll probably just uh, get denied again and then to the Supreme Court, where they will probably still deny him. I mean, eventually, once he gets to the highest court, the Supreme Court, and he's denied, then there's nothing he can do about it, and the states that want to remove him from the ballot will be able to, and the states that want to prosecute him for election interference will be able to, and there will be nothing he can do about it. Haig has, uh, has been covering the former president. Uh, Garrett joins us now there from Washington. Garrett, have we heard anything so far from the, from the former president or his team? We've not yet, Craig, but I think we know what we will hear from the former president. I suspect he will announce an appeal either to the district court, uh, or to the appeals court and bank, as, as Laura was suggesting, or to the Supreme Court. He has been really singularly focused on this case, including posting on social media overnight what he believes is the importance of continuing this concept of presidential immunity past the presidency, suggesting that any future president would immediately be indicted after leaving office by the opposing party. He argues in in public uh, to a lesser degree than in his if immunity is not granted to a president every president that leaves office will be immediately indicted by the opposing party without complete immunity none of the united states would not be able to properly function that is a big time lie this is just donald trump scared that he's going to be going to jail so that's why he wants uh, complete immunity from all his crimes. A government can still function, even if a president can be um, charged for crimes while current or after um, a person doesn't need to be granted full immunity after being president because then they're just a regular citizen.
And if he, I mean, and it's funny how he's uh, worried about being um, indicted by the opposing party when that is something he um, talks about doing, um, charging Biden and others for various crimes if he becomes president. Uh, filings before the courts that a sitting president would be unable to properly function if this ruling had gone against him. Again, that was a post from last night. I suspect we will soon hear more more from him today. And Craig, remember that Donald Trump has made all of these legal battles that he's engaged with, and especially this case, central to his campaign. He argues that this is all political speech that he was involved in, that he's being targeted by the courts and by the Biden Justice Department because he cannot be beaten by President Biden electorally. Now he has this... But... Trump believes that a president uh, should be immune from all crime unless impeached by Congress. And since Biden hasn't been impeached by Congress for anything at the moment, everything he is doing is completely legal, even if that means he's unfairly targeting Trump. And that's according to Trump's logic. I mean, his lawyer did say that a president could assassinate a political opponent and be not guilty or um, can be able to will be able to get away with it unless uh, impeached by Congress and then that's only the time they're able to be like charged and convicted of the crime but since Biden hasn't been con or impeached of anything He's in the free. This court defeat on his plate, I suspect we will soon see this continue to be a centerpiece of his political arguments. It has worked for him with his base, winning these first early primaries uh, in the Republican presidential nominating contest. Many Republican voters I've talked to say they could have agree with Donald Trump in theory about these cases, but there's peril for him politically down the line if these cases do move forward into the summer and early fall election season, Craig. Oh, Laura, you've been following this ca case closer than most. I know you've been poring over some of these documents. So one thing that's important for the timing here, because okay. remember, that's, of course, what the former president's goal is here, is to slow this down. The D.C. Circuit, this federal appeals court, has said that he has a certain prescribed period in which he can try to appeal as to the Supreme Court, as we were talking about, and he can try to go to the D.C. Circuit, but they've given him a very narrow window, so he can't just sort of sit on this as long as he wants. He has roughly a week through about February 12th if okay. he wants to go to the Supreme Court. And if he goes to the Supreme Court, everything on here that's happening right now will stay on pause. He can do that while it works its way through the court system. If he doesn't go to the Supreme Court by February 12th, then this is back in action. What does that mean? Then the trial date is back on. Because right now, remember, with this case has been working its way through the courts for months now. Yeah. And so the trial date has essentially been frozen in time. But now that they said he's not Im immune, theoretically, he could be tried. But th what they're saying is he will have some time now to go to the Supreme Court. Again, roughly till about February 12th. Oh, we had also.